Hey guys, uh, welcome to Oracle Fusion Hub's uh, ADF Mobile uh, Tutorials. So far, we have discussed uh, a lot about ADF Mobile, the basic um, uh, installation procedures, the basic um, app development, and uh, using web services and stuff. So uh, um, I think uh, uh, in all these uh, sessions, I missed out uh, uh, working with the ADF uh, uh, native uh, database, which is SQLite. Uh, I mean Android uh, native database. I'm not discussing about uh, iOS as of now, uh, uh, but I'm I'm, I'm more uh, I mean I'm not really into iOS uh, development. I'm not sure about uh, that, but I I know I have a basic understanding of the Android uh, app development lifecycle. And hence, uh, my ADF uh, mobile tutorials are more focused uh, uh, towards uh, Android uh, uh, platform. I I think uh, that will suffice uh, for ADF since it is a, a phone gap uh, variant. And uh, anyways, let's dive into today's uh, uh, topic of uh, the tutorial, which is. Uh, working with ADF, uh, I mean, uh, uh, native database. So uh, right now what I do is I'll, I'll create a uh, create an application which will uh, read data uh, from the uh, development, I mean, na uh, database, native database, and then uh, uh, it shows on to the screen. Uh, while doing that, we will also uh, insert data into uh, the database. So it will be like read and write operations uh in the native database for that what we uh, as usual will we will start creating a new application and uh, these are like the pretty much uh, simple i mean uh, same tasks that we uh, keep on doing it so uh, i'll name it as uh, uh, ofh oracle fusion hubs uh, sql light and my application prefix would be article com dot oracle fusion hub dot uh, ofh sql light and uh, i don't want i just click on finish it's the usual process that we do in all the tutorials that we have seen so far and uh, let us wait uh, until it creates the basic application so we have the application uh, the basic application that is ready and uh, um, let us talk about something uh, uh, should i say okay um, before that what we do is we create a new uh, new um, sql file which is um, how do i name it okay employees dot sql and uh, i would place this file in my uh, not in my view controller but in my application controller source uh, meta inf this is very important you have to place uh, i mean the script that i am creating now is an initialization script which involves uh, creating the tables inserting values into the tables etc that will be a, the initialization part so all the initialization sql scripts should always be placed in uh, meta inf directory of the application controller not the view controller please please make sure that you're uh, following this convention so uh, uh, I, I, I I think we can uh, store it in even uh, whatever the other uh, um, folder that we want uh, I, I'll, I'll show you like I mean how uh, the system or the J developer will come to know uh, which folder you're actually uh, dealing with anyways uh, but but uh, for a beginner let us put everything in the meta info that's the standard that was discussed that was there okay now click on this and uh, click ok so you have an employee sql file ready and uh, um, i would write i would drop the table if exists i mean this is a sql like practice i'm not sure uh, drop table if exists employees this is the table that we are going to create 
and uh, uh, now create table employees and uh, I would employee ID as number and uh, employee name would be worker to of 300 and uh, I'll create department ID I'm not using this department ID anywhere but uh, um, this is only for uh, I mean I might use it in the subsequent uh, tutorials so we have the table ready but we also need some uh, uh, initial values uh, for our tutorial to work um, so I'm just creating inserting some data into uh, employees table some one and uh, employee name is Satya and uh, the department ID would be 10 and uh, I'd copy this and uh, now I'll have uh, um, uh, James this would be 2 and uh, let us keep it as 10 this would be 3 this would be Chris and uh, this would be some 20 and uh, this would be 4 this would be 5 Chris William 30 Chandra 40 so our initialization script is ready and it was it, it's been placed in uh, meta inf so this uh, initialization script will be called during uh, the uh, starting of the application and uh, these things will get executed and these things will not get executed automatically we have to write uh, the parsing logic for it as well so um, what we will do is um, we'll first write the implementation like i mean uh, let the system uh, parse it and then uh, execute these statements and then we'll go ahead with the rest of the application so for that what we need to do is we have to uh, look at the life cycle listener implementation class this is very important and uh, before we dive into this class i'm, I'm not sure if this really helps uh, folks out there but uh, I, I would like to show you a few uh, uh, pictures of how the actual uh, Android uh, application uh, uh, life cycle is all about. I mean, uh, this might help you a little bit. So um, um, uh, this is this is a native app development uh, activities that uh, that that uh, that I show here. I'm not sure if the, the, the if this re, uh, actually correlates with uh, our ADF mobile application, um, but but a quick uh, uh, overview of the activities uh, that happens when the app is I mean uh, during the life cycle of an app. So when the activity starts, uh, it calls on create method, and then it calls on start method, and then it calls on resume method, and this is how the uh, actual flow. So uh, uh, basically. Basically, what uh, we, what I want you to understand is that whenever an activity actually starts, activity by activity, I mean app uh, in the idea of mobile. So uh, it calls specific uh, methods, and those methods are responsible for performing activities uh, during the life cycle of that particular application. As such, uh, with 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 this information. I would like to uh, show you something in the lifecycle listener implementation Java. So this lifecycle listener implementation in Java, I mean this this class is the uh, repository or the, or the place where uh, the lifecycle of an app is actually maintained. So uh, here, if you see, there is there is something called as start. So this start method will be called at the start of the application. And you see the stop this will be called at the uh, termination of the application and uh, there are a couple of other uh, uh, methods that that we discuss later uh, in some subsequent uh, tutorials but right now um, uh, we have the requirement to actually uh, call this particular 
initialization script at the start of the application so that means we would do it here in the public void star so we have something to write here and uh, so what i do is i'll i'll write something here um, and uh, i'll first write some logs application logger dot severe and uh, at the start method okay now i will i'll execute this script so what i do is i'll uh, i'll call initialize db script so uh, this is not there so before that i'll, I'll write some catch here uh, if there are any exceptions so we would we would um, throw a runtime exception so throw no runtime exception of uh, that would be and uh, um, and now let us create uh, this particular method uh, or, or, or let us for the sake of uh, uh, time uh, saving um, let us okay let us create the method here so this would be my uh, initialization db script and uh, here uh, what i'll do is for the sake of uh, time this thing i'll ha i have the code ready uh, that i have written uh, so what i do is i'll just copy paste it so that oh sorry what is it I missed something here oh. so uh, this is my script of imports that I have to make sure uh, okay so now what what, what it does this initialize db script is um, we have an input stream of uh, uh, these are pretty much the uh, global variable i mean uh, the uh, variable de declarations and uh, um, what we do is we take the doc root uh, which is the directory path of that particular application directory and uh, we append that with the uh, the db name the hr.db so um, uh, if that db exists so we'll create a new file and if the file is already existing then we don't do anything or if that is not existing then we'll create the new data jdbc source sqlite db name dot get connection and then we'll will uh, uh, make the auto commit false because we want uh, to commit it as per uh, the uh, given uh, uh, tables not i mean we do we or we commit it at the end of all the uh, scripts so 
and then we read it from the script i mean how do we read it we read it uh, using the script we create a script stream and uh, here if you see uh, i've placed this in meta info folder so uh, that is where uh, i'm getting it back and uh, i will uh, name this as employees dot sql because uh, my script name is employees and not HR and uh, the script reader is new buffer reader and what I do is it, it, it just basically goes through each and every line of the script like if you see uh, we created the script and then uh, we have the next line a script read line and uh, if the next line I mean we start parsing each lines if the next line is starting with rem or if it is starting with commit or if the next line or, or the line has no data in it then will not do anything uh, or else will append it to a uh, to a string buffer and uh, will execute it so it basically it, it it loops through each okay now i see my line has drop table no oh, let us e execute it my second line has nothing so don't do anything there my third line is having some create table and uh, it's not ending with semicolon so i just keep appending it till till i encounter this uh, uh, semicolon and now i'll execute this statement uh, because i it, it's with a semicolon and then next line has nothing uh, and just it keeps on doing that and at the end uh, we finally commit to the transaction and we close it so this is what uh, what is uh, what happens in my initialized db script um so that that that's pretty much self-explanatory as of now uh, but i've given uh, a lot of explanation so let us save this and now um uh, you have to associate this lifecycle listener implementation uh, to your actual app uh, that is where you uh, how, how you do it is you go to the application resources uh, descriptors and go to adf metainf and click on adfmf application.xml here you have a, uh, if, uh, something like lifecycle event listener so you attach that particular uh, stuff i mean com oracle fusion hubs ofs sqlite application lifecycle listener implementation this is where you have done your changes so now you have uh, successfully associated your uh, lifecycle listener implementation so uh, the next task would be uh, creating some POJOs and then getting data uh, into that uh, POJOs and then displaying that into the actual uh, app. So that uh, how you do it. Mm, now what we do is we'll go to uh, okay we'll create some POJOs first. So for that. Okay, we are at application controller, and uh, we'll create we'll we'll create some Java classes here. So uh, let us name this as employee bio, and uh, so this employee bio consists of uh, private int um, employee id private string employee name private int dept id okay and then uh, let us let us generate accessors for it so the all accessories so we have all the accessors ready so we have an employee bivo object ready now what we do is we'll create another uh, pojo class and we'll name this as employee dc so this is uh, we, we use this uh, class as uh, the data controller and to save some time i have the script ready so i'll place it and then i'll try to explain it uh, from from there so